Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back. Today, we're answering the question, why do real estate agents fail? Now, on the surface, this sounds like a somewhat depressing topic, (laughs) and I suppose it is if you just go off the topic, but what you'll discover as you hear Julie and I go through these reasons or these points, that every one of these points and these reasons are easily avoided. Thus, you can avoid any potential failure in your future. So without any further delay, Julie... Yes. So again, today we're discussing those top seven reasons that in fact, most agents really do fail out of the business. In fact, according to the National Association of Realtors, 87% of licensed realtors fail out of the business within five years or less. That means that only 13% survive. Now we're going to stop right here. You guys listening will be the 13% survive because you're bothering to listen to things like this podcast. But why is this failure rate so high and how can you make sure that you're part of that 13% not just surviving, but thriving. So let's jump into some of these reasons. And we'll talk about, of course, in conversation a little bit about what you can do about it. And remember, all these uh, notes and the notes from all of our podcasts are available on Premier Coaching. We are uploading all of these to the first level in Premier Coaching, which, by the way, you can get Premier Coaching absolutely 100% for free for 30 days. And that includes, obviously, the notes from our podcast, but also all kinds of objection handler scripts, Uh, listing presentations, passive and proactive lead generation ideas, our FISBO scripts, expired scripts, centers of influence plans. You have a, uh, what was that? Almost basically more than a, maybe a three year social media plan. All kinds of things are there waiting for you and it's absolutely free. If you'd like to join, which of course you do, go ahead and text the word premier, P-R-E-M-I-E-R to 47372. Text the word premier to 47372. Or just go to members.timandjulieharris.com. Go to members.timandjulieharris.com. And the dot is not spelled out. I mean, just literally like a period, you know. So I had somebody ask me that question. So it's members.timandjulieharris.com. And you will then be able to enroll directly. But the easiest and the quickest way to do it is just simply to text the word premier to 47372. Remember, message and data rates may apply. All right, Julie, reason number one, agents, uh, well, I hate to sound negative, but the, really the top reason that agents yeah. fail. Okay, reason number one, absolutely no accountability of any kind. Most agents were previously either in school, lots of accountability, high school, college, etc., or were W-2 employees working at a normal person job with, you know, daily accountability. But now you're in a 1099 independent contractor world. Most agents become immediately too independent and can go months without knowing what to do, when or how to do it. So remember this, listeners, sporadic work equals unpredictable income. We talked a lot about this whole uh, lack of accountability when we were talking about coaching on previous coaching calls, but let me give you an example straight off my coaching calls today. Uh, We have a newer client, Brad, in Orlando. He lives in the world of Disney, and he said something really interesting that I wrote down to help our listeners. He said, you know, the difference between how I'm doing my listing presentations now that I'm in coaching is completely different than when I didn't have coaching. And I had him explain, he said, you know, before I thought and had been told that it was okay that, you know, you go on some listings, you win some, you lose some, that's just the nature of the business. He said, now, after listening to a podcast where you, Tim, were talking about own your success or failure, he said, when I don't take a listing, I got to own it. And I'm working on the skills that it takes through coaching to make sure that I do take the listings that I go on. He said, the way I'm looking at it is different. He's doing things like asking if he didn't take it, why was that? So that he can polish that skill. And we talked about something as simple as always following the seven-step listing uh, system. And if you skip any of those steps, you're at risk of not taking the listing. There are a lot of people that get into real estate primarily because they don't want to have a boss and they don't want to have Mm -hmm. a schedule. They don't want to have any accountability. And they're surprised almost when they discover that they are not going to really achieve anything. And and unfortunately, most of them uh, will fail because what you need when you're in real estate is you do need accountability. You do need a schedule. You do need some daily minimum standards. You need all those things so that it keeps you, frankly, on the right track. And if you aren't having that level of discipline, if you aren't doing what you don't want to do and you don't want to do it at the highest level, what's the result? Well, ultimately, it's going to result in 
you getting out of the business. It's going to result in you not having consistent income. But the psychological downside of just not, you know, frankly, doing what you don't want to do and you don't want to do it at the highest level, the psychological downside of allowing yourself or choosing to fail to what Brad's point was, mm -hmm. is that you're going to carry that along around your neck for the rest of your life. And maybe you could have been the best entrepreneur. Maybe real estate was just the launching pad for you to create something really magnificent or a whole bunch of magnificent things business-wise. Who knows? But because you did not force yourself to have a, a, just a very basic level of discipline in your business and personal life, you'll never actually be able to accomplish that. You know intuitively, and we talked about this actually, I think yesterday, yes. that you accomplished more as a kid when you went to school, when you had a bell that rang that told you you were supposed to go to one activity to the next. Doesn't it make sense that if you take that same learned discipline to your professional life, you'll accomplish more? Of course it does. Reason number two, Julie. Yes, reason number two, confusion about where closable, motivated buyer and seller leads come from. This starts when new or newer agents have a couple of fairly easy deals right out of the gates, almost always friend or family deals. That makes it easy to believe that all your deals will always come easily and always from people who already trust you. Now, once that runs its course, and it will run its course, agents wait too long to become proactive or start spending money that they don't have on things that don't work. Closable leads come from people who clearly need your help. Refer to our podcast, 22 Ways to List 22 Homes in 2022, for example. Of course, when you join Premier Coaching, the first thing we're going to have you do is complete the real estate treasure map. That's your fill in the blank business and life plan. And the first lead generation, we call them spokes on your wheel, is going to be centers of influence and past clients. But here's the thing. You cannot rest there. You cannot stop there. We're going to encourage you to then adopt or choose another, uh, like a proactive lead generation spoke. We'll teach you how to do it. We'll teach you every aspect of what it means to be a proactive lead generator. And then once you've gotten masterful at that, then we're going to have you add another proactive lead generation spoke. But here's the big takeaway. 90% of your time has to be spent doing proactive lead generation and 10% on the passive. And certainly in the last 15 years, what you've seen is that flip and it's resulted in an incredibly high historic agent failure rate because agents get into the business and what are they told to do? Join a team, buy buyer leads, do your branding, do your marketing, make TikTok videos. All this passive stuff has proven itself to result in a higher level of failure for uh, agents. And just look at the statistics than learning how to be proactive lead generators. And by the way, Proactive lead generation, the business system we teach you in Premier Coaching, it's about being a professional. It's about building a long-term sustainable business. It's about building something you're truly going to be proud of because it produces consistent transactions, consistent revenue, and most importantly, consistent profit. Reason number three, Julie. Reason number three, relying on luck, hopium, and speculation instead of good old-fashioned sales skills. So stop spending your hard-earned money, or worse than that, money you haven't earned yet, on things that are not directly to closing transactions. If you can't track it directly to close deals, I don't know why you're doing it. 100%, especially in a market like this, so anything that is, oh, I'll just pick on the easy one, branding, right? Anything that you're doing that does not have a direct relationship to a uh, an opportunity to help someone and make money, like your effort equals your result. You talk to a for sale by owner today, for example, this is the most rudimentary but obvious example, and the for sale by owner clearly has a house to sell. Guess what? The for sale by owner also maybe wants to buy a house. And when you list that for sale by owner, you will probably are also going to be able to uh, sell that house to a, a buyer. In other words, you're going to do three transactions at least from that one conversation with that one for sale by owner. That makes sense to me. That is effort equals results versus somebody calling you up and convincing you that you have to build some long-term brand that's going to cost a bottomless pits of money that you may or may not ever see even a single cent from in terms of return on investment. A lot of people get into the business and they don't have any business background. Julie and I were similar to that when we got into the business, you know, 30 years ago and we had to learn on the job. Why don't you shorten the learning curve and just learn from the experience of others? A smart man or woman learns from the mistakes of others. Uh, a brilliant, uh, a smart man or woman learns from the mistakes of, uh, what was the rest of it? There's, uh, I, I, <laughs> I need more caffeine. <laughs> I know, we'll look smart man or woman. Learn from others is the bottom line. Yeah, learn from others. Okay. No, now, no, a smart man or one, woman learns from uh, their mistakes. A brilliant man or woman learns from the mistakes of others. Yeah, meaning you do not have to go this road alone. You don't have to have such a steep learning curve. Just learn from what actually works. You know what's hilarious about uh, for sale by owners and for rent by owners? 
They have a billboard in their yard I with know. their phone number that says, I want to sell my house. And yet agents will spend all kinds of money and effort and time trying to circumvent having actual conversations. There are hundreds of thousands of agents right now that are mm -hmm. out in the marketplace that have been doing the passive stuff for a long period of time. And they're now seeing the market change and now they're the smart ones are realizing that they have to change with the market or yeah. the market's gonna wash them over. But they're going to be emotionally, and I totally and completely understand it, it's gonna be very difficult for them to admit that the things that they've been investing in their air quotes that are happening right now are not actually gonna work. And that's going to be something that if you wait too long to cut those expenses off, you're going to suffer needlessly. If you wait too long to learn how to be a proactive lead generator and how to run a people helping profit driven business, you're gonna suffer, especially in a market like this. Try uh, Market shifts, this is way more than a shift, economic shifts, mm -hmm. macroeconomic shifts that we're experiencing now, they this type of market will not suffer anybody who's not going to be versatile and not be willing to pivot really quick. So if it's not if it didn't really work whatever you were doing in the past, it sure as heck isn't going to work now. Point number 5. 4. Okay. Four. So point number yes. 4, or reason number 4, not leading with profit. Your product is actually profit or at least it should be. Now, every day you make the decision to run a not-for-profit organization or a for-profit. We talked a lot about that on yesterday's podcast about running your schedule. But which one you're running depends on the actions you're taking. So again, refer to the podcast about your success schedule that we gave to you yesterday. But agents are a little bit screwed up sometimes about this, this word profit, which sounds like money. It sounds like wealth. It well, might it sound is. like success. And, it is. and they, they're weird about admitting to that, aren't they? Well, but let's just be honest, guys. And this is a little, this Julie and I came up with this years ago, but the, here's the thought. If you are not leading with your goal of making profit, your product is profit. What you are producing in your business is happy customers or closed transactions. What you're producing in your business is all the things that you naturally and normally want to say. But the real litmus test of whether or not you're an efficient owner of a business is the profit you are making. It is okay sometimes not to make profit in a month. Sometimes that happens. Maybe it's a couple months. But ultimately, the profit you're pulling from your business is a direct representative or a direct representation of the number of people you helped accomplish their goals, especially in a transactional business like real estate. So if you're not making profit, if you're spending all of your money or you're not making money, you need to really take a hard look at that. Again, this market is going to not suffer any fools. And if you're not uh, leading with profit, in other words, a decision hits your email or someone calls you trying to sell you something, if you, you this is the question you need to ask them. I want you to explain to me, Mr. Vendor, how within the next you know 60 to 90 days, what you're selling me now is going to result in me making money and making a profit. Because what you'll find is 99% of the time, everyone trying to sell you something, they will not want to answer that question because they will not have A, ever had that question asked of them because most agents don't think like that. But B, they won't have an answer to a question like that because they know that their product won't produce profit in a short uh window like that. In a market like this, where things are changing like they are, you absolutely positively have to have product or have to have profit as your product. Yes. And reason number five, this is my own personal uh, bugaboo that drives me crazy. Lazy lead follow-up. How many agents come to us saying we want more lead generation and we get into it and you're sitting on leads. I had a conversation today with a great broker about this. Lazy lead follow-up, overly complicated communication methods. If you're not using lead follow-up scripts, buyer and seller pre-qualification scripts, and furiously fast in your lead follow-up, you are on track to be part of that 87% failure rate. That really is the bottom line, by the way. You probably don't need more leads. You just need to get really good at lead follow-up. You need to know how to pre-qualify. You, your, if your goal is to generate a lead, especially a paid lead, which a lot of you guys are addicted to because you never learn how to do it yourself, and you're then going to stick that lead into a CRM and drip on them. Listen to your coach, or maybe I'm your future coach, along with my wife and all of our coaches here at our, our business. That is going to be an exercise in futility, again, especially in a market like this. What you really need to get good at, and I can tell you from when Julie and I sold real estate, our most profitable transactions always came 
from Julie and I not delegating lead follow-up to our team, but doing it ourselves, calling the people back, knowing what questions to ask. It meant something more to the potential customer that we were pre-qualifying, but also we did not leave any questions unanswered. We would find out that houses to sell, if we, you know, houses, notice I didn't say house. We'd find out what their motivation was, their time frame. We would use our own, uh, you know, in the case of uh, a buyer, a buyer pre-qualification script every single time. And the main thing is we call them back instant at the second we either answer the phone or the second the lead uh, showed up in our lives, we call that lead back right away. That in itself will usually be enough to get you the business. And that's the, if new agents out there, you're listening to me right now, that's your secret sauce, furiously fast lead follow up. You don't have scripts. You don't know how to pre-qualify. That's all included in Premier Coaching. This is all waiting for you. Text the word Premier to 47372. Text the word Premier to 47372. Or just go to members.timandjulieharris.com and you will then be able to join, um, obviously, our Premier Coaching Program. Remember of texting, message and data rates may apply. Reason number six, Julie. Reason number six, no business plan, no business coach, and little exposure to success. Influencers on Instagram don't count. Or YouTube. Or YouTube. <laughs> Birds of a feather flock together. So if you're hanging out with a bunch of new or unproductive agents, you feel like that's normal. Instead, follow and emulate the successful. This is one of the worst things that I see in social media is a bunch of unqualified agents trying to coach each other where one of them will complain about something and then another one will be like, oh yeah, well, the market's just crappy and things are hard and blah, blah, blah. Birds of a feather flock together. So you have to be in the hands of somebody who has been there and done what you are trying to do versus other people who are struggling. Well, not just been there, done that, right? I mean, what you said is true, but it's also been there, done that and shown a lot of other people how to do it. Yes. I'm going to go through my four, our four suggested filters to use before you listen to anybody for advice in any aspect of your life, but I'm going to make it related to hiring a real estate coach. Number one, these are your four questions. Write these down, uh, listeners. Um, number one, have you, Mr. Pers Perspective Coach, sold real estate before? If not, do not move to the next question. You should seriously be thinking about only hiring people who've actually sold real estate before. Never sold real estate before. You should be instantly invalidating that person to give you real estate advice. They might be useful in other aspects of uh, your, your business building, but specifically as pertains to being a real estate coach. If you've not sold real estate, that in our opinion should instantly invalidate you. Now, let's say you do come across someone who's offering to be a real estate coach and let's say they have sold real estate. So the next question is, have you sold Mr. Perspective Coach at least a hundred homes in a year? If they have not, you can do better. Do not work with anyone that's not been able to, cannot prove to you that they sold at least 100 houses in at least one year. Okay, good. You found someone with a license. You found someone who sold 100 homes per year. So let's go on to question number three. Number three is, did they sell at least 100 homes per year for five years in a row? Now, if you find a coach that's done all three of those things, you've got somebody special, a unicorn of real estate coaches to be sure. But here's the thing you got to be careful of. Were they selling land? Were they selling parcels? Were they selling build uh, units in a building? Or were these individual... Uh, real estate trans transactions, you know, individual customers like what most of you will be dealing with. You need to be selective and careful who you listen to. It really does matter who you get your advice and your coaching from. Now, let's say you find somebody that uh, answers affirmatively to all three of those questions. Let's go to question number four, and this will knock virtually every real estate coach out of the running for your consideration. Question four is, have they done at least 100,000 paid one-on-one -on -one coaching calls at least 100,000 paid one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. Do not allow someone to fool you. Here's the challenge. Just because someone is good at selling real estate does not mean they're good at showing other people how to sell real estate. And just because someone's had a license doesn't mean they, or just because someone has uh, calls themselves a real estate coach doesn't mean they even know how to coach others, uh, let alone sell a lot of real estate. You have to be very, very, very particular who you listen to. So based on those four criteria, have you had a license, Mr. Perspective Coach? Have you sold at least 100 homes in a year, Mr. Perspective Coach? <laughs> have You can go ahead and turn that Live. off. Have you sold at least 100 homes for five years in a row, Mr. Perspective? No, Julie, don't do it that way. Oh, there you go. Have you sold? That's proof that we do the podcast live. <laughs> Julie, just talk. Anyway, have you sold at least a uh, hundred homes a year for at least five years in a row, Mr. Perspective Coach? And the fourth question, of course, is have you done at least a hundred thousand paid one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching calls in your real estate career? 
again, really important that you understand. Just because someone, Julie, just unplug it from the, the wall. <laughs> Just, be, just because somebody has been successful at selling real estate does not mean that they actually are successful at teaching other people how to do it. And there's proof that Julie and I do our podcast live and we do not edit it. Oh, and, and question, <laughs> reason number seven, Julie. Hopefully I took care of that. Okay, so reason number seven, failure to save and failure to pay taxes. Now, Glenn Sanford, founder of the fastest growing real estate brand in the world, EXP, said that agents are historically terrible at those two things. Again, saving for yourself and actually paying your taxes or paying them on time. You must pay yourself first. You must pay your taxes on time, ideally quarterly, and find multiple sources of profit from your real estate practice. In other words, a level of business maturity, financial planning, yes, following a plan, but actually knowing what's going on with your finances and moving towards that and not screwing up things like saving for yourself and your taxes. Well, I mean, let's full disclosure, Julie and I were not that knowledgeable on how to save for taxes after our first year in the business. Nor savings. This and is no, how we know part of this. I, I, yeah, we earned hundreds of thousands of dollars our first year in the business when we were in our early 20s. And we uh, did not save for taxes. And we were like, hold on. What do you mean we owe out money in taxes? <laughs> Why didn't anyone tell us about that along the way? And uh, fortunately, uh, we were able to actually, we got lucky and we listed one very expensive house and sold it and we're able to pay off our taxes from the previous year. But that was a wake up call to us that not only is no one there to help us build wealth, but no one is there to help us keep the wealth that we are trying to build. And it's interesting in real estate, it's easier to make money than it is to keep money. And, well, is. and taxes really has become all, pretty much all of your um, largest single expense if you ever stop to think about it. But that aside, because I don't want to give anyone anxiety, the reality of it is, is what EXP has created is a absolute multiple income stream pathway for you to create financial independence. And that's one of the reasons that three and a half years ago, Julie and I aligned with EXP Realty. It's one of the best business decisions we've ever made. If you're thinking about joining EXP Realty, we'd love the opportunity to be your EXP Realty sponsor. If that's you, please feel free to text me directly at 512-758-0206. That is my cell phone. Please do not call. Some of you call and you're surprised when the voicemail says, do not call text. So I'm telling, I'm trying to save the effort. Just text me if you're ready to move forward and join uh, Julie and I at eXp Realty. Text me at 512-758-0206 and I will follow up with you. We will have a conversation. We'll uh, confirm that we are a great fit for you as your sponsors at eXp Realty. So Julie, I think these were seven really succinct, very appropriate points for Mm -hmm. them to make sure that they're being very, you know, aware of. Pretty direct, pretty clear. And also with a clear path forward, how you get away from those things. You know, we could go through all those. This is one of the things that we coach, we concentrate on coaching. And I I didn't get a chance to tell you one of the special requests that we're adding to Premier or uh, resurfacing in Premier. Hot topic. Here's, Here's the topic du jour. What do I do if the house doesn't sell in two weekends? Okay. <laughs> Price reductions. Another version of this is, what do you say to a seller whose house has been on the market for 45 days? Well, oh we my. Do, well, tell them about the communication plan. That's exactly what we're, we're posting, polishing, reposting. It's called the 12-week seller communication plan. Now, why 12 weeks? Well, honestly, if you make it 12 weeks, right? you definitely have a price issue. You might have a not showing it, you know, too many showing restrictions, but probably it's price. But what do you do? What do you actually say to a seller if their house doesn't sell instantaneously like everybody's been used to for practically a decade, right? I mean, that is a legitimate question. And and this also plays into why are you guys still taking uh, listing agreements for 30 days? These are hot topics in coaching. How do you deal with this? And it doesn't, it, look, don't be embarrassed that you don't know the answers uh, to the, you know, questions Julie's throwing up there. There's no reason you would. You you wouldn't. In this past market, you didn't have to do anything like that because houses, they basically sold themselves. Mm-hmm. You get a listing contract signed. You could practically go to the ATM or the drive through teller at your bank, <laughs> if your town still has one, and just drop it into the little suction tube and basically it would have been like a, a depositing a check. I mean, listings were selling so fast. That is going to change quickly, especially at the next six to 12 months. So make sure you are well aware of the skills that are needed to really thrive in this market. And by the way, 
in the probably, I'd say the last 20 years, there's never been a better time to become a listing agent. That's for sure. Because there's so many agents that have been in the market only during this past seller's market. So they've never developed really good seller skills. Right now, if you develop the seller skills that Julie's talking about, price reductions, really it's a combination of, you know, good old fashioned real estate skills combined with some psychological doctor filling of the prospective seller, you're going to win more often than not. And that is what it's all about. That's the reason we want all of you to seriously consider becoming premier coaching clients. All right, Julie, so what are we talking about tomorrow? Uh, gosh, I have several topics. This, this has bubbled up a lot. So I, I may be revising a little bit tomorrow because there's two sides to that, right? There's the, I agree, 1,000% listing agents. You can build listing inventory now. You can build your skills. But also we're getting questions like, what does it mean to actually accept a contract? Maybe it's your only contract where the buyer's asking for 3% towards their closing costs. What does that even mean? Because for years I've been just saying, no, rejected, rejected, rejected. How do you do a net sheet that builds that in? How all about of these home, advanced skills. How about home inspections? How about, I, I mean, all these normal market things. Don't wait to learn these things. Here's what I, I had this experience. I had a text or somebody messaged us on Instagram or something. And I, I probably get three or four messages like this a week. Fortunately, I don't get more of these because they always give me a little pang of panic when I get one. <laughs> somebody messages me and says, Tim, out of the blue, I got a listing appointment uh, tomorrow or the next two days. I've never been on a listing appointment with anyone I didn't know other than my mom or my, you know, somebody I was going to essentially just walk in on and get the contract signed. This is a competitive listing appointment. What am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. And the answer is you probably aren't going to get it because you probably, you have, you should have been prepared a long time ago. But, you know, in Premier Coaching, we teach you how to do every aspect, a uh, seven-step listing process, pre-qualify, obviously, the pre-listing pack, the listing presentation. You have to have a more formalized professional approach when you are going after sellers. So the old saying is, right, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. A better time is, you know, the second best time is now. That is what really matters. Don't wait to be the agent who's in panic mode because you did not and were not prepared for the opportunity as, as they present themselves. More opportunities will present themselves in your life in general, the more prepared you are. And you'll find yourself, uh, and this is true, the more excited you are because you know, knowledge equals confidence, ignorance equals fear. The more knowledge you have, the more almost magically, mystically, for those of you who like woo-woo, you're going to soon discover there are actually opportunities everywhere. Well, guess what? Those opportunities were there before, but you were actually avoiding them or hiding from them because you didn't know actually how to uh, help those people or seize those opportunities. You've been avoiding being competitive. You've been avoiding going after sellers where you don't have a previous relationship. You've been avoiding and preventing yourself to become yourself as the, you know, essentially the best version of yourself as a real estate professional. Now is the time. Do not delay any further. Do seriously consider, if you've not already done so, becoming a Premier Coaching member. Just text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to members.timandjulieharris.com. In the meantime, guys, thank you for continuing to make this the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And there are thousands of past podcasts waiting for you on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and of course, our YouTube channel. And thank you for all the support of our YouTube channel is growing like gangbusters. Guys, it is, you are helping Julie and I to be in perfect alignment with, with what our highest and truest purpose on this planet is as real estate professionals, which is being of service to you. And for that, we sincerely thank you. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.